we're not going to return it to the command zone this time. Finally get this right. Although, oh, it, it has no ability. Wow, the one time. The one time, wow, that's, that is not good. That is not good. I don't know if there's a way to get that out. Today on Commander Replay, can we recover from the brink of disaster in this 16-turn grind fest? Find out next on Commander Replay. Help support me and save 15% on singles by using the promo code REPLAY at MothershipATX.com. Commander Replay t-shirts, available in orange and colors beside orange. Welcome back everyone, playing some God Eternal Oketra today, and this deck list comes to us from Patreon supporter Nate. Take a look at this opener. Um, we've got two lands and a Thraben Inspector. I would expect that we would be able to draw into a third land pretty soon. I think this hand is decent, so we'll keep. It's maybe not perfect, but I think it's fine. There's 37 lands in the deck I just checked a second ago, and uh, 37 is a pretty good place to be. Pretty good likelihood that we'll run into lands 3 and 4 on time. Faithless looting for opponent. Oh no, I forgot to make the changes I was going to make to this deck. Uh, I had to import it twice for reasons, because Magic Online. But uh, one of the things I did is, I, in the other list, I switched out uh, Wayfarer's Bobble for Nyx Lotus, just because I've been wanting to try Nyx Lotus in mono white decks more. But I think the Wayfarer's Bobble is actually going to help us out here a little bit. So I've talked a lot of smack about Wayfarer's Bobble, but this is the only time it's actually good on turn one. Uh, every turn after this is significantly less good, to the point where I'd be much happier with an Armillary Sphere, because Armillary Sphere is card advantage, Bobble is not. And one of the big things is, if you have two lands Armillary Sphere, that's probably a very keepable hand, and that allows you to have four or five pieces of gas ready to go. Whereas, with this bauble, we're still just going to have to hope that we make land drops 3 and 4. We do catch a Weathered Wayfarer off the top, which will help tremendously in that front. But, uh, unfortunately, bauble's going to work against the Wayfarer a little bit. Uh, maybe not the best, but we'll play the planes, we'll crack the bauble. Actually, you know what? You know what? I think I'm going to wait on the bauble. Yeah, because opponent will be ahead of us next turn. Let's play the Weathered Wayfarer instead, actually. And then we'll play the Thraben Inspector. I think this makes more sense, because as long as D-Manny plays a third land, we can activate the Weathered Wayfarer and potentially get a really cool land. Probably a card draw land is where I'm thinking, but even like a Myriad Landscape or something wouldn't be terrible. I didn't look through everything, but it looked like his land base was optimized pretty well. Uh, we see Gaia Reach, Arch of Orzka, Bonder's Enclave, a lot of non-basics, Emergence Zone, Scavenger Grounds. Strip mine, even Throne of the High City. One that I haven't really used that much, but seems fine. Uh, he's missing War Room. War Room is the one he's missing, so that might be a spot for a change. But otherwise, not too bad. We got a lot of the utility lands, so I like that, especially the card draw ones. Those will get us out of some trouble. So opponent's got a Lotus Cobra. Those are kind of nasty. Those can do those can do some wild stuff. And D Man, he's got himself an Arcane Signet. Does play that third land that we need him to. So we found land number three, which I think is helpful in this moment. Because at some point, we're not going to be able to activate the Weathered Wayfarer, especially after cracking the bauble. So. Uh, but let's activate the Weathered Wayfarer right now. Ancient Tomb is nice because it's ramp. But I actually don't know if we need it that much. I think, um, think I want Myriad Landscape more than I want anything. If we play the Landscape now, uh, I think we need a way to turn on the Landscape. Play the Watchtower now. Crack the bauble. Get a planes. Uh, you know, Thraven Inspector keeps the Lotus Cobra back, so normally I'd probably attack right here, but the green deck will be highly aggressive, having seen this Toski deck before. Let's take a look at our commander. It's got Eternal Loketra. Five mana for a 3-6 with double strike. Whenever you cast a creature spell, make a 4-4 black zombie warrior creature token with vigilance. When it dies or is put into exile, put it into your library third from the top. Yep. Very good mono white commander. Gives you lots of free value. And it's able to spit a lot of bodies and a lot of power into play very quickly. The one downside is that because there just isn't a lot of good haste in Mono White, everything you're doing is really telegraphed. And if you have to rebuild, it can be very slow. So like if you get tangled up in a bunch of board wipes in the mid game, uh, sometimes it's hard to recover with this deck before someone else can find their win condition on like turn 8 or turn 9. But it is certainly very powerful, but it's also not without its faults. So, ah, just like I thought, Lotus Cobra going on the attack. Uh, an opponent did some things right there. So they dropped in a Moss Warp Bridge, got the Landfall trigger, cracked a Myriad Landscape, and then regrowth the Myriad Landscape. The good news is, is that they are ramping lands, and that'll be good for more activations of Weathered Wayfair. There's an Esper Sentinel. 
Taking a look at her opponents, Fish is playing Toski Bearer of Secrets, one that I've seen a little bit. Uh, it's pretty heinous. It's a green deck that draws a lot, and it can just overrun you very quickly. So, a little nervous about it. Uh, it's a 4-mana 1-1, one, one, can't be countered, indestructible, attacks each combat if able. And whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Yeah, a little too wild on that ability, I think. Needs to be some limiting factor there, and there is not. Opponent plays a Solemn Simulacrum. Pretty good. And that'll bring it back to our turn. There's a Bygone Bishop. Uh, play the Myriad Landscape. We have four mana this turn, which is a little awkward. Don't know that we'll be able to activate the Wayfarer. We'll probably try to get someone with the uh, Mind Sensor is where I'm at, I think. I think that's the plan. And we'll see if one of the green decks wants to ramp lands and maybe we can get an activation with the Weathered Wayfarer. Myriad Landscape coming back. Lotus Cobra. Elder Gargaroth. Gross. Such a disgusting card. Uh, I might burn the Generous Gift on that. See if anyone else wants to deal with it. Uh, at this stage of a game, this is a card that can just take over a game. It generates so much value. Opponents on five lands were also on five lands. It's a little awkward. Beast Whisperer for opponent. Also very good. Dark Ritual into the Esper Sentinel. Yep. Oh, we have a Stone Cloaker, which is really good against Cedrus. Really, really good. Uh, so we'll take a look at D Manny. He is piloting Cedrus. This is a graveyard deck. Six mana, five, five. Each creature in your graveyard has unearth for two and a black. Uh, we can just be exile and stuff all day, which sounds fantastic. There's a Grave Titan. Oh. There's a Sir Conrad in their graveyard. I would love to get rid of that Sir Conrad with the Stone Cloaker. Um, yeah, Grave Titan's going to resolve. So now the problem is, I mean, this one draws cards, which makes it so much worse. Also makes three threes. Ugh. It's got Vigilance. End step, I'm still on Shoot the Gargaroth. It's just too good. Even with a Grave Titan in play, and I know that Grave Titan's insanely good. Uh, we can pay one. Our middle opponent, by the way, is Sean piloting his Lathiel the Bounteous Dawn deck. Four mana, two, two, lifelink. At the beginning of each end step, if you gain life this turn, distribute up to that many plus one, plus one counters among any number of other target creatures. Uh, so you gain some life, and your team gets huge. It's a pretty threatening kind of deck, so we'll want to watch out for that. Anyway, it brings it back to our turn. There's another Plains Make Our Land drop. Happy about that. Uh, this is probably the turn. We should probably just get our Commander in. Our Commander is a very solid blocker, so yeah, I think that's going to be a good idea. Unfortunately, not going to be able to leave too much up. Next turn, we can potentially leave some mana up for stuff. No attacks. Pass the turn. So far, our valuing is going decent. Not just running away with it, but not doing terrible either. If you like the video, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell. No, oh, I wanted to leave the uh, Aven Mind Sensor up to try and get fish with the Myriad Landscape. Because, oh yeah, they can double landfall. Basically mana neutral. Well, almost mana neutral. Yep, cracks it again. Ugh. Well, at least we'll be able to activate the Weather Wayfair. Pretty sure. We're on six. Yeah, that puts them on seven. So we'll be able to activate the Wayfair. Uh, we'll wait to do that. The Cedrus deck can be playing wheels they have good incentive to play wheels so we'll want to wait nissa who shakes the world is super nasty sean's gonna draw uh they're gonna turn a land into a creature their forests are doubled gives the sun titan gives that grave titan a nice place to attack which isn't us but a lot of things can go wrong between now and the next turn uh three three over to sean toski coming in surprisingly coming in after combat not getting that card draw right there Oh, it's probably because they, yeah, it's probably because they couldn't tap the land first, but Toski's in play. It's not the easiest thing to deal with. Generous gift on the Nissa. Love it. Fish is getting all the gifts, but rightfully so, because Mono Green is like that. Like, if that Nissa sticks, Fish could potentially win the game in like two turns. Probably not next turn unless she draws something crazy, but definitely in two turns, because you draw a bunch, cough out your hand, and then the second time you do that, everyone on board's just going to die, right? Assuming no board wipes between now and then, but yeah, so shooting the uh, Nissa definitely needed to happen. Faithless looting into the Esper Sentinel, and that's with flashback. Kokusho and Archaeomancer into the graveyard. Ugh. See what D-Manny wants to do with this Grave Titan. Uh, unfortunately, Toski can just block it all day, which isn't the best. Goes no attacks. Interesting. I mean, everyone, everyone has to fear the green deck a little bit. It's so strong. Uh, go to the end step. Activate the Weathered Wayfarer. Been thinking about which land I want for a little bit. It's really a toss-up between Ancient Tomb and... And there's no War Room in here. I kind of wish there was. Um, but one of the other card draw lands. 
I think we'll go with the Ancient Tomb for now, just because we have a lot to do with our mana still. And uh, just having a little bit of mana ramp is going to help. That's a Knight of the White Orchid. That's a little more mana ramp. Does anyone have more lands than us? That's seven. We're on six, so Knight of the White Orchid is still good. We can actually activate the Weathered Wayfarer again if we want to. So let's do that. And this time we'll get the card draw land. We'll get a Bonder's Enclave. So we are valuing Weathered Wayfarer doing some really nice things for us. Once upon a time, I wasn't in love with this card, but over the past year or two, I've really come around on Weathered Wayfarer. Can do a lot, especially in Mono White where you really need the help. So let's get the Ancient Tomb into play. We'll play... The Oh no, I meant to play the White Orchid first. Uh, that's not good. Four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven. Yeah, we gotta wait for fish to play another land on the White Orchid. Okay, that being the case, we'll get Bygone Bishop. Um, the things I'm caught between, so we have a bunch of plays to make, which is Bygone Bishop, Stone Cloaker, even Mind Sensor. Um, how much mana do we have total? Seven? Seven's a very awkward number. Yeah, I guess just pass like that. And we'll flash in the Mind Sensor and the Stone Cloaker whenever it's most inconvenient for our opponents. Yeah, definitely messed up with the Knight of the White Orchid, though. If we did that, yeah, we would have had a, we would have had enough to go White Orchid, Stone Cloaker, even Mind Sensor all in the same turn. That's kind of what I was looking at. Gingerbread Cabin makes a food. Landfall. Deep Forest Hermit. Yep, makes a bunch of squirrels. Wood Elves. That'll put another land in, so we'll be able to keep going with all of our... Number of lands matters cards. Opponents can activate the Moss Warp Bridge. Let's see what's coming down. Kamal, Heart of Crosa. Wow, we're in trouble. We are in trouble. Um, This probably does change how we're going to handle things, though, because if someone has a board wipe, they have to play it now. Uh, the team is huge. Everything is huge. 6-6 six, six our way. Two 6-6s six, our way. Toski to D-Manny. Oh, they have Trample. 5-4 over to Sean. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do then is Stone Cloaker. We'll go no damage on the Ancient Tomb. This will make a 4-4. Four, four. At least soak up a little bit of the damage. I mean, I guess on the other hand, we have True Conviction also. Hmm. That's a thing. Question is whether the board's getting wiped or not. Is this every combat? Where is it? Uh, Exile Sir Conrad from the Graveyard. Oh, we totally missed the Wood Elves, although we kind of want them to have the Wood Elves a little bit. Could have hit them with the, Myri with the Mind Sensor, but not the best chance of stopping that one. It's a mono green deck, so there's going to be a lot of basics. D Manny was thinking about something, but decides not to. Sean's going to give up his Esper Sentinel. Uh, we'll throw a 4 4 in front of the 6 6. I do think this is going to fish out a board wipe, though, because it like almost has to. Where is this thing? At the beginning of combat on your turn. Okay, so it's only your turn, but that's still a game winning type of card. Yep, fish is going to draw four. Yep. Tressalara, Moon Dancer. Cool card, but is not a board wipe. And they'll draw a card. Heliod Suncrown, gonna draw a card. Yep. It's a good one right here just because of, uh, you know, the need for a board wipe. Also, it's an indestructible creature. I don't think they have the uh, devotion yet, but yeah. But even still, because it's not a creature, it would even survive Deluge, which is a big one to worry about. Yeah, maybe we should... I mean, I guess if they don't play a board wipe, it probably would have looked a lot better to just keep that 4-4 four -four around. Still a lot of damage, though. But I guess there's no guarantee the True Conviction is gonna survive either. Everything into Fish. Makes two more tokens. It's going to block one with the Kamal. Grave Titan Wood Elves. Draws with Solemn. I think they get hit for two. There's the damnation. That's exactly what I was counting on. Uh, perfect. Fish is tapped out, so don't expect any craziness over there. Yeah, I think we just let everything go then. Uh, well, what we'll do is we'll crack this Myriad Landscape right now so that we don't shuffle our God Eternal Oketra away. Nice. So everything worked out just the way that I thought it would. I was getting nervous that he didn't have the board wipe, and uh, it makes more sense to keep the 4-4, if that's the case. Put God Eternal Catcher back in the command zone. Eh, that's not the best. Oh, we can you still use the ability? Um, do we want the ability? Yeah, I don't feel like paying the 7. We're a white deck. Oh, nope, it stays in the command zone. Uh, that's an Ashiok Dream Render. <laughs> that's a nasty card. Yep, gonna do some exile, and they're gonna mill themselves. It's really good against the green deck because you just you gotta watch out for stuff coming back with the green decks. It's so annoying. That's a Fiend Hunter. Fiend Hunter's good against this Toski. It's gonna make them have to recast it at the very least. So uh play the Bonders Enclave. How much mana do we have? We have ten mana. We could go Yeah, we could go God Eternal Oketcher, a Fiend Hunter. It's a solid play. Let's do that. God Eternal Oketcher triggers, we make a 4-4. Fiend Hunter, exile the Toski. Use the ability. See what they want to do with it. Goes back to the command zone. 
That's what I thought they would do. At the very least, it slows them down. That deck is so unbelievably fast. Three visits for opponent. Oh, can't search. Wrecked. Oh, yeah, we can't search, so no uh, no Knight of the White Orchid for us until that goes down. Very serious question about whether I want this to stay on the battlefield or not. Because it shuts off the green ramp. That's a thing that it does. Deranged Hermit. Uh, makes a bunch of squirrels that are two twos. Has Echo. Yep. Lurking Predators. That's a magic card. Watch out for that one. Fish is actually down to seven lands because she lost one, I think, in the board wipe. I think so. I think that's, yeah, I think it was that forest. So, uh, Knight of the White Orchid. We missed our opportunity with it, although it would have got swept away. That's the other thing, too. Would have just gotten blown up, so I don't know. Maybe that worked out. Uh, the clunky play is going to be when do we get this True Conviction into play. Maybe we set up for another turn and then drop the True Conviction, because we should have a bunch of 4-4s four by that point. Cedrus coming in. That'll trigger the Lurking Predators. <laughs> Such a ridiculous card. Gets themselves a Selfless Spirit. Yeah, it's a nice little pickup. Oh, Lurking Predators is so good against, like, Stone Cloaker and basically what our tr what our deck is trying to do because we're just trying to loop a creature over and over again. Uh, yep, D-Man is going to mill himself and then exile the graveyards once again. Uh, gets four cards he probably wanted. Lands, Frantic Surge, Blasphemous Act. A Skull Clamp is a magic card. So let's play the Skull Clamp. Probably should have counted my mana before I started all this, but... Uh, into the Lurking Predators. No creature. Equipped to the 4-4. So I think this is an interesting play because we're going to swing this over to the Ashiok. And if they block, their commander dies and we draw two cards. If they don't, they lose the Ashiok. Both outcomes are good for us. Okay, they let the Ashiok go, and I'm completely fine with that. Um, let's get the Bygone Bishop into play. Actually, let's double check our mana. We have eight mana. That's an awkward amount. That's enough to go Bygone Bishop, flash a Stone Cloaker if we need it, and then crack a clue. Seems reasonable. Got to turn a low catcher trigger and lurking predators trigger. Misses again. Uh, we're going to crack the clue to see if we can pick up the land. We pick up the land. Drop the Arch of Orizka. Love it. Uh, we have the city's blessing. Fantastic. So we'll pass like that. And uh, we're starting to amass a little bit of a board state now. Love it. Echo cost on deranged hermit. Let's see what they do. They let the deranged hermit go. They have other things they want to do, it seems, which is probably recast their commander. Uh, mana dork into lurking predators. Misses again. Yeah, I've had not great luck with Lurking Predators whenever I've run it on the channel. Um, there's definitely, like, a critical mass of creatures you need. It's probably somewhere around 30, uh, at least. But still, you know, midpoint in the game, someone starts casting a lot of spells, you are going to get a lot of creatures. Doing anything for free is very good. Uh, Shamanic Revelation, they're going to draw a bunch of cards. Yep. Misses again on the Lurking Predators. I, haven't ch I didn't check to see if he's leaving them all on top. Oh, he's leaving a card on top of his library. That's why he's missing. Yep. So there's something really cool on top. I don't know what it is. Druid's Call. Whenever enchanted creature is dealt damage, its controller creates that many 1-1 one -one squirrel tokens. Interesting. Oh, you know what we should do? Uh, before the end of Sean's turn, we should probably Stone Cloaker and get rid of something. Uh, probably the Archaeomancer, because that one seems kind of nasty. Right? Because then they can just get any of these spells back. And... On the other hand, I guess we could just Stone Cloaker when they try to get the spell back. I guess we'll wait and see. That works. Yeah, we can just Stone Cloaker the spell. Force them to use the mana, because then they'll just do something otherwise. Minimus Containment. Uh, enchant non-land permanent. Enchanted permanent is a treasure artifact with sacrifice an artifact, add one mana of any color. Not amazing. Um, do we do the Stone Cloaker thing now instead? As to get another 4-4, four four, since our commander is going to be down here for a minute. Yeah, we'll do it now. I guess what we can do is, like... It's a lot of triggers. Got Eternal Oketra, Bygone Bishop, Lurking Predators, Stone Cloaker coming in. Uh, but what we can do is we can have this killed and then draw with the Skull Clamp one way or another. And uh, get back to our commander nice and quick. There's a clue token. Uh, we're going to exile the Archaeomancer. Return the Stone Cloaker. And the Containment resolves. Cracks the Fabled Passage. Unearth the Thassa. This could be interesting. Hope it's not a Grey Merchant. I don't think Thassa saves it from uh, Unearth, though. Yeah, or if it would leave the battlefield, it gets exiled. Unearth Ardent Elementalist. Uh, what's this one do? Oh, return target instant or sorcery to your grip from the graveyard to your hand. Not great. Another board wipe? Blasphemous Act? The other issue is that he's low on cards. So, you know, he might just need like a frantic search or something. Yeah, it goes for the Blasphemous Act. So we're probably going to lose everything here. I guess that's maybe not the end of the world. It's not great, right? But... We can sacrifice the God Eternal Oketra and then draw with the Skull Clamp, and then we're right back on it. Uh, Fish will get 13 tokens. Yeah, that's not ideal. 
opponent passes through combat. Yeah, this is a tricky spot. Uh, yep, that's really good protection against Blasphemous Act, is what that is. <laughs> D Manny's like, uh, does that mean I'm not being attacked? I'm like, I can attack elsewhere if you're feeling agreeable. And he said, I'm feeling very agreeable to not be hurt a lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the politics if this wasn't in play i would say that yeah you just go for the blasphemous act but with that the problem becomes that then fish just recast their commander and draws half their deck we'll save that play with our commander for another turn i think two creatures getting exiled uh thassid deep dwelling i don't know that the thassid deep dwelling does anything does it it's gonna try to target this thing but i think that thing will just get exiled oh but those are both exiled maybe that does work yeah, that does work because it, it the Thassa is also exile. Okay. Yeah, I see. I see. Getting back, frantic search. Yeah, that's fine. I figured he might go that way just because he's kind of low on cards. Doesn't have, like, we've picked apart his graveyard a little bit. We've got some of his best stuff, so it's pretty tough when that's the case. There's a land tax. Uh, I don't know how much value we'll get from that. We seem to be leading on lands. Just what Mono White is known for. <laughs> yeah, we're on 10 lands. I don't think anyone else is on 10. Oh, what are we doing? Is this the true conviction turn? I think it's the true conviction turn. Use all of our colorless mana. What's this do? Scry one, reveal the top card of its basic land, put it onto the battlefield tapped. Only if opponent controls at least two more lands than you. Yep, that, nope, that's uh, it's not gonna be triggering anytime soon. True conviction into the lurking predators. The lurking predator sticking means that there's a pretty good chance our true conviction will hang in there for a bit because, you know, this would likely eat up some artifact enchantment removal. Uh, yeah, let's do some attacking. Into fish, into fish, I'll send that one in the fish, and this one into Sean. Those all have Vigilance. Send this one into Sean. With fish, we'll likely just... I would imagine they block with this thing. But maybe they don't because of the Blasphemous Act. Okay, they're going to block with it. Yeah. Easy value right there. Uh, the creature with Druid's Call goes down, takes five damage, so they'll make five tokens. Yeah, that's still pretty good. An overrun is a problem. Fish is on eight lands. Sean's got less than that. I don't think there's any reason to play the land tax right here. There's a reason why we might need to go all six mana uh, with the Stone Cloak or with the Aven Mind Sensor. So we'll leave those plays up instead of casting a land tax that isn't going to trigger for quite a while at this point. Toski coming in. Yep. Lurking Predators. Opponents do not have a lot of blockers. So Fish is going to be drawing cards. What'll be interesting to see is how many they leave back, because if they just turn everything sideways, we can send a really big attack in that way. I wonder if they send all nine at us. We would eat three and then gain a bunch of life. Doesn't really seem worth it. Uh, everything into Sean. Leaves two back. Yep, that's smart. We'll see if we actually commit the Mind Sensor this turn. Uh, with Double Strike, Mind Sensor is somewhat meaningful damage, as is Stone Cloaker too, actually. Oh, but Stone Cloak are so good against D Manny. I don't know that I want to give that up. <laughs> it's just so, so good. D Manny would want to find a wheel because wheel would get Stone Cloaker out of our hand. Sean Scoops is unhappy with being attacked. Well, that'll make this interesting. Fish still draws because Magic Online only allows you to scoop at sorcery speed, which is actually a pretty good thing because uh, when you're playing open games, especially, people will do stuff like this. And try to deny you the value that you would have gotten. Like, for me, it's usually off a sword trigger. But in Toski's case, lots of card draw. Goes up to 15 cards in hand. Yeah, that's pretty gross. Luckily, not a ton of mana left. But this probably forces the Blasphemous Act. Oh, because Sean leaves. Got Eternal Oketra as a creature again. That's nice. Cross and Grip. Uh, yeah, true conviction. Bummer. Cuts down our damage a lot. Also, it's a big mana play getting eaten by a small mana play. Don't love it. Frantic Search for d -Manny. Yep. Yeah, let's see what happens here. Curious about this turn. Notably, the Thassa trigger uh, makes this a permanent creature now. That's pretty cool. I need to start using this thing more. I've got a couple decks that can use this. Gerard is the one that's coming to mind. Anarchist is a little bit too overcosted for what it does. Especially like in Boros, a lot of what you're using is uh, instants. Especially with Hearth and Home. Hearth and Home makes this thing insane. Unearth the Pitiless Plunderer. Oh, how do I feel about that? So they can wipe the board and they'll gain a bunch of mana, I guess guess that's fine. Probably not worth trading the Stone Cloaker in for. We just keep our finger on that Stone Cloaker button as soon as things get bad. It's a really good place to be. Ravenous Chupacabra is interesting. Could be annoying here. Unearth the Solemn. Yeah, that's good value. Two attacks. Uh, we'll put our commander on the Cedrus. It'll kill it naturally. Opponent blocks with their commander. They're going to get some treasure tokens. Massacre Girl. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, that'll happen. If that kills Toski, 
slows it right down. Bunch of Massacre Girl triggers. Oh, I forgot to put God Eternal Oketra back in the library. I keep doing that. I'm so used to just automatically clicking yes to the command zone that it's muscle memory. Hard to fight that. <laughs> really hard to fight that. It's not the best. Our commander is going to be a little expensive. That is going to matter. Uh, but we do get to draw off the Skull Clamp. That is something. Uh, Core Skyfisher is a magic card. So the creatures get cleaned up. Uh, exile the Unearths. Uh, end step flesh in the mind sensor. Now's a good time to commit this because Stone Cloaker and Skyfisher do essentially the same thing, so we don't need to hold it while worrying about getting our commander back. Just want to get the creature in play right here. Uh, and then we'll crack the clue. This is the stage of the game where you really want a, uh, Nykthos in your deck. Because if we get a couple things into play, then we could be making extra mana, and that's really what we need. Oh, that's a Smothering Tide. Those are good for making extra mana. Um, play the planes. Play the Smothering Tithe. Do we have enough for our commander? I don't think we do. Commander's on nine. Yeah, I think we only have eight. It is unfortunate. I guess we just cast the Orchid. I don't think anyone... It's going to be so long before anyone catches up to us land-wise that... Might as well just get the first striker into play at this point. Put a Skull Clamp on it. Also, there's ways to pick it up in this deck, so... It's not like I can't ever trigger again. We'll play the land tax just in case. Seems like a real off chance, but... Uh, we'll do some attacking. Swing into D-Manny. He's got a lot of life. Hoping to get a couple treasure manas here. Because opponents don't have much in play, I think we will. And that'll help to get our commander back in, leave up Stone Cloak, or do all those things we need to be doing. First Smothering Tide trigger. We get a treasure. Fantastic. This is meaningful counterplay against Toski also, which is nice. Vernal Bloom. Ew. Ew. Double up the forests. Uh, that's worth a Heliod's intervention at some point. Probably wait till next turn to do it, but... Harmonize for three cards. More Smothering Tide. Love it. Mana is the thing we need. Abundance is also a magic card. Uh, unfortunately, I think Abundance stops Smothering Tithe. If you would draw a card, yeah, you reveal. Yeah, it's not the best, so we'll want to shoot that. Yavamaya Elder. Yep. For the first time all game, though, Fish doesn't have a giant board state of creatures, so... Not that we exactly have a lot of damage we can punch through right now, but... Fish is on 10 lands now. We're on 11, so still a little ways before we do some stuff. Oh, that's a chainer. What creatures in their graveyard? Um, Ravenous Chupacabra is a creature. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm not willing to trade in... No, we could still Stone Cloaker. That's a thing we could do. Grave Titan's also a creature. Stone Cloaker. Grave Titan? Too much value there. Especially with haste. Oh, don't tell him he's got an instant speed thing. He's going to bedevil the Stone Cloaker. No. Um, that's unfortunate. Uh, we need to return a creature we control to our hand. Uh, Mind Sensor, I guess, right? We can just recast it. Where's Sun Titan? We need to get this Stone Cloaker back. <laughs> I don't know that Chupacabra is really worth it. Shooting a Knight of the White Orchid is not all that impressive. What else does he have? He activates the Chainer ability. Kakusho's, yeah, Kakusho's the one you go for right here. Oh, uh, goes for the Elementalist again. Okay. Get back the board wipe. What are we getting? The Devil's also kind of nasty. Yeah, getting back the board wipe, just in case. Yeah, I mean, if they just keep doing that, right? Like, it's really hard for us to rebuild. 4-4 four, four Menace our way, yeah, we have the most life. Can't do much with it. Eh, I guess we can throw two creatures in front of it. I don't really want to do that, though. We'll wait on the Heliod's intervention, uh, just so we get our lands back. Try to save some of our treasures if we can. Mother of Runes is a card. Cast our commander. Try to leave up the card draw lands if we can. Uh, play the Mother of Runes. We make a 4-4. Four, four. Swing. Ah. I don't know if attacking for three really does that much here. I think it's more valuable on defense, honestly. Because Chainer can be a little explosive. Definitely want to shoot these two things, though. So shoot Vernal Bloom in abundance, and we'll also shoot the uh, Arcane Signet. X is three. Most of our treasures, we can use one land. Leave the Bonders Enclave up just so uh, in case if we run into more treasures, we can uh, draw with the Bonders Enclave. We'll pass like that. You know what? Mother of Runes does give us some help against Blasphemous Sack. We do need to untap with it, which is going to be the challenge, but... Smothering Tithe. Oh, they're paying. Nope. Changes their mind. Ha <laughs> ha! Got her. Kenra's transformation on our commander is not amazing. You know what we can do? We can use that to give it pro green at some point. They draw. Smothering Tithe. Evolutionary Leap. They're going to sacrifice the Avamaya Elder to the Evolutionary Leap. And when it dies, they get to search for two basic land cards. Oh, we could even mind censor that. We could mind censor that. Well, too late now. What'd they get? Uh, Finn the Fangbearer. Death Touch. Whenever a creature you control with Death Touch deals combat damage to that player, that get, they get two poison counters. That's kind of gross. Squirrel Mob. Plus one, plus one for each squirrel on the battlefield. 
Finn the Fangbearer coming in. Yep. More treasures. Soul Ring. The other thing we can do, too, we could also just play this course, the core Skyfisher. Bounce our commander. Go about it that way. Although, I guess we lose the Skyfisher ability to bounce itself. A mirror March. Oh, man. Two nasty enchantments back on the battlefield right after we used our Heliod's intervention. That is unfortunate. But, like, doubled mana and denial of card draw is... Like, we just had to shoot it, so... Activates the Chainer ability. Let's see what they get. Ravenous Chupacabra. Let's see where this goes. Mom is probably one target. Mirror March, Chainer... Yep, Mom is a target. Could really use that Sun Titan. Got a couple nice things in the graveyard we really want back. Mother of Ruins down. No additional Ravenous Chupacabras. The next one may have gone over to Fish, though. Nothing on our board is terribly appetizing. Uh, we're gonna draw with the Bonders Enclave. It's a Plains. Oop, another planes isn't what we needed. Uh, play a planes, draw with the Bonders Enclave. Uh, emergence zone, another land. It's unfortunate, unfortunate. Already made a land drop. Um, they have the Blasphemous Act. That that's what makes this tricky. I don't want to like give up everything we have going, but I'm almost wondering if like Mind Sensor Skull Clamp. If we attack D Manny, he can just block with this and then recast it again. Yeah, that doesn't seem great. Does not seem great. Let's send in the Knight of the White Orker over to Fish, cause oh, they don't have their commander in. I think they'll just take this, though. Oh, they're going to block. Uh, that's, Our thing's got first strike. This will kill that. Oh, Fish has got something. Oh, sack it to the evolutionary leap. Okay. There they go. That makes sense. Gets Avenger of Zendikar. Okay, so we're probably looking at the Blasphemous Act then. Because Fish has a ton of lands. Um, If we're looking at the Blasphemous Act, that means we probably just kind of leave everything as is. Right? Because this will just die. And then we can let's put the Skull Clamp on it. It's a good idea. And we will pass like that. The worst is that fish can just keep refilling their hand with that open mana and evolutionary leap, even if uh, the board wipe happens right here. That is 10 tokens. It's a lot. Landfall Avenger trigger. No attacks. Oh, D Manny discarded his Blasphemous Act. Um, hmm. It's going to pay for our treasure. Don't love it. It's going to send three our way. Yep. He'll definitely chip us for four. Block the Ardent. Block the 2 2. We'll take the four. We're not going to return it to the command zone this time finally get this right although oh it it has no ability wow the one time the one time wow that's that is not good that is not good i don't know if there's a way to get that out you need a misfell planes or something uh you may cast a creature card from your yep yep you need to exile our graveyard somehow elementalist mirror march i don't think about the fact they can get a second one there's a blasphemous act yep there's a second one imagine they're probably on like they need card draws what they need Yep, getting back the Frantic Search. Let's find out how much Graveyard Exiles in this deck. I think there's a Scavenger Grounds somewhere. Yep, there's a Scavenger Grounds. Nothing here, the 0-1 slots that I really like. Uh, I think we're... I think... What's this do? Power 2 or less doesn't get it back. Archangel of Thune. Yeah. Miss Veil Planes? No Miss Veil Planes. Yeah, that's not good. That is not good. God, that's so frustrating. Been messing it up all game, and then the time that I remember to do it, it has no abilities. Ugh. Blasphemous Act. Oh god, don't tell me Fish is going to protect this. Nope, Evolutionary Leap, that's fine. There are 66 cards left in our deck. We need to hope that Scavenger Ground is in the top couple. Also, Scavenger Ground would shut down D-Manny's deck very nicely. What do we get? Uh, Endraise Forerunners is a problem. Questing Beast is very good, and Tribe Elder is fine. Cracks of Food gains 3 life. Board gets wiped. Mirror March exiles at the end step. Uh, I'm going to bring in the Mind Sensor now, because we're probably going to Skull Clamp it. Uh, draw with the Arch. There's a Plains, not helpful. Uh, mana Crypt is something. Play the Mana Crypt. 64 cards to go. We will Poke Fish. And then basically just try to Skull Clamp everything until we can find Scavenger Grounds. Mentor of the Meek. Uh, that can get us card draw. Let's get that in. Oh, should have went Souls Attendant first. Oops. Do that next. Souls Attendant. Ooh, we can go Skyfisher or Pay One Draw. That's the thing we can do, so we don't have to like sacrifice all of our stuff. It's not the most mana efficient, but... Mentor of the Meat, pay the one. Sarah send it. We're above 30. That's cool. Man, our commander could be in play for all of this. That would be incredible. We would have so many 4-4s. Four Souls Attendant, Mentor of the Meek, Solemn all trigger. Should probably auto some of those. Pay for the ability. Strip Mine. Use the Solemn. Get a Plains. Auto this. Uh, Skyfisher, pay the one. There's the Scavenger Grounds! Found it. Found it. Return the... What do we want to... Return to our hand. Skyfisher? Yeah, Skyfisher. Play the Scavenger Grounds. Activate the Scavenger Grounds. Sacrifice a Desert. Yeah, let's just go back to the Command Zone this time. 
not mess that up like we did before. And it's back at our command zone. Got there. Nice. Uh, the shuffle. The shuffle helped us put it on top. I don't know where it was before that, but, you know. We started that turn at 64 cards, I think. And uh, we're down to 58 in our library. So, you know, we drew, drew a bunch of cards there. Treasure token. And uh, we've also nerfed D-Manny really badly. Uh, the problem is now we need to deal with fish. Toski coming in, at least they spent a lot of mana on it. And Souls Attendant's still in play. The fact that we didn't have to Skull Clamp everything is really nice. Because now as Fish keeps dumping creatures in, we'll keep gaining life and just making it harder to close it out. And there's an End Raise Forerunners, which I guess does that very effectively. But, you know, gives us more of a chance. Questing Beast. Questing Beast into us. I'll draw with the Solemn. We just need, we need mana and more stuff to cast. I mean, we have some mana, but I would love more mana. Oh, what does it have on it? Death Touch, Power, oh, can't block two or less. Okay, then. Well, I guess we're losing some life. Oh, what we could do... We could use the Emergent Zone, which might be a good idea. In case Fish coughs out a bunch of stuff, and then we can kind of react and hopefully not get caught up in a board wipe. Let's find out where the Blasphemous Act is. It's exiled. Massacre Girl's exiled. Opponent's gonna draw one with Toski. Yep. Smothering Tithe. I always kind of forget about Emergent Zone. It's one that I need to run a little bit more than I do. There's a lot of time, especially like right now, where having Flash is a big deal. Uh, Frantic Search should give us more treasures. Well, maybe he can pay because he doesn't have much going on, so. Smothering Tithe. Oh god, I think our commander's on 11. That's so much. It pays for a treasure. Yep, paying for both the treasures. Recast the commander. Yep. Mirror March. We gain a life. Brings it back to our turn. Mana Crypt Flip. Would like to win this. Lost the flip. Not ideal. Uh, a Mary of the Sky Ruin. Well, our graveyards were exiled, so uh, not the most helpful right here. But we'll play the Emergent Zone. Put Skull Clamp on our Solemn Simulacrum in case we get attacked again. And then we're just going to do everything with instant speed. Fish is primed for a big turn, though. And raise four runners could be an issue. Pass like that. No attacks. Smothering Tithe. Uh, Wolfbriar Elemental kicked ten times. Yep. That is a thing. Uh, that puts us in a bad spot, actually. Because next turn they're set up for end race forerunners. Uh, at least we're going to gain a bunch of life. So there's that. And that will be a very difficult amount of damage to stop. I guess, though, the other thing is, so if we load up on creatures, we can send a few their way, and we should be able to at least cut the distance down a little bit. Because they'll probably have to block with a couple. And we have Vigilance. We gain 10 life. Not bad. Up to 42. Uh, questing Beast back our way. Nope, changes going over to D-Manny. Doesn't know what to do with it. Toski into us. Yeah, we'll draw the Solemn. Block with that. One Toski trigger, Solemn, Skull Clamp. Ooh, we draw three. And Questing Beast trigger. Draw. Unbreakable. Ooh, Unbreakable Formation is a card. Draw two. Archangel of Thune, Dawn of Hope. That is interesting. That is very interesting. Oh, with the Souls Attendant? Okay, okay. We, we have some legs now. We have some legs now. Might just be able to end it with that. <laughs> Fish says, when in doubt, board wipe it out. <laughs> Spot removal could get us. If they shoot the Archangel of Thune, that would be pretty terrible. Oh, yeah, there's the board wipe. Uh, we're going to lose Souls Attendant. That's the combo. Although, uh, we can just spit a bunch of 4-4s four in. I guess that's fine. They had the board wipe. They had the board wipe. Won't be able to draw like crazy anymore either. Does not attack with their commander. <laughs> Crack Emergence Zone. Cast our commander. So, for those that aren't aware, you're going to get a really good look at how powerful Flash is right here. Flash is an unbelievably strong ability that... Uh, it needs to be on more white cards, honestly. Because this is how you get around board wipes and kind of counteract the fact that white doesn't have haste. Got Eternal Loketra coming in. Uh, get the Sarah Ascendant in. Make a 4-4. Four, four. Get the Archangel of Thune in. Uh, we'll play the Skyfisher. Make a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, return the Skyfisher. Back to our turn. Mana Crypt. Ooh, Lantax finally triggers. Last turn of the game, more or less. <laughs> Might as well just pull the lands out so we stop drawing them. Use the ability. Get three lands. Heads. One the flip. Uh, Pilgrim's Eye. This is search for a basic land. That Skull Clamp Potter is what that is. Play the Ameria. What does this thing do? Whenever you gain life, you may pay two draw a card. Yeah, we'll get that into play. Uh, put this on the Archangel of Thune. Actually, probably better on our commander, because double strike. Let's just check on that damage. That's 6, 12, 24. Yeah, this should kill fish. Swing into fish. D-Manny has requested one final turn. 
Uh, and I'm compelled to give that to him because he's basically done the Lord's work with all those board wipes because we had nothing for the green deck. The green deck would have overrun us on turn five without his removal. So uh, being that we can only kill one player, we can honor his request. Also that one player, Fish. Fish has never run out of cards at any point in this game. So uh, just full grip, entire game, down to 43 cards in library. And this is all set up by the power of Emergent Zone. Fish goes down. Nice. Uh, we'll get a couple Archangel triggers. Pump the team up a little bit. Uh, maybe we should have played more stuff first. Uh, we'll pay the two and draw. Have a lot of lands in hand, so find our way to more gas, just in case we need it. Uh, Dust Elemental is a fun card. Has Flash. Excellent. So we can kind of just sit on that one, and we'll draw again. Swords of Plowshares should hopefully keep us from losing. What's this thing do again? Creatures you control gain indestructible. If it's during your main phase, they get plus one, plus one. Ooh, and Vigilance. Okay. Didn't need the damage. If we needed it, I might have used it on fish, but... Uh, I think we've done everything we need to do. We can get wild with the Dust Elemental if we really need to. We'll cast... We'll cast the Skyfisher one or two more times here. Cast the Skyfisher. Return it. Do it one more time. Then we'll leave up the other stuff. Just make sure we have enough in case, in case he drops in a bunch of creatures one way or another. We just want to be prepared. And we'll pass like that, leaving up the mana for Fear Elemental and Unstable Formation. Uh, this is one of the very rare decks where you get to use, sorry, not Fear Elemental, Dust Elemental. Uh, a very interesting card out of Planar Chaos. Discard a bunch of lands right here. You have 12 cards in hand. That's atypical for the mono white deck. Discard most of the basics. The Swords is nice too because worst case scenario, if a Grey Merchant comes down and it makes sense for us to uh, Swords our own creature... We could do that. I will do that if I need to, to win a game. If swordsing my own creature means that uh, we can thwart the big play, then absolutely. Uh, d Manny said all he can hope for is Massacre Worm and a few coin flips. Okay. Yeah, that's a reasonable strategy. Feed the Swarm. Shooting our Sarah Ascendant. Um, That's his last card. That's fine. That is our life gain other than this guy, though. And he scoops right there. Yeah, nothing left. Finally getting there. Wow, what a game. From the brink of disaster when I put our commander into the graveyard with no way to get it out. Oh, man, so lucky that we were able to find Scavenger Grounds on that turn. Because if we didn't do it that turn, uh, if we had to mess around for more turns, I don't think we would have had the time. Maybe we would have with the board wipe, but it's still. Like, that's not a thing. Like, this deck needs the commander. Uh, there is almost no damage in this deck without it, so... Yeah, so this deck, this deck is interesting, and uh, Nate's played it on the channel once or twice in the past. It is all about the art of value in mono white, and this list is a little bit older, so it's even missing a few newer cards that uh, are definitely going to help a lot, but he has really gone all in on the fact that he just wants to draw cards and value everyone into oblivion and just, and just keep sticking in the game, basically. That's the whole thing. Now... We got a lot of help from D Manny in this game because he supplied the removal that was needed to stop the green deck. And without that, we would have died on turn five. We probably would have died again around turn eight uh, and probably a couple more times after that. So that game ended on turn 16, by the way, which is an incredibly long game. Uh, very, very interesting and nuanced game. A lot of removal. Just a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff happened. As far as this deck, so I do think there are a couple things that can happen here. Uh, one, I only see the Wrath of God. I would add a bit more removal. I guess there's a Dusk to Dawn right there. Um, another board wipe or two, I think, is where you want to be. If you really want to, you can use one of the creature ones. Uh, what's the creature that destroys all non-giants? That is a very reasonable option uh, for what's going on here. Or Doomscar is fantastic. Route is fantastic. Fumigate is fantastic. Any of those type cards. Um, there's a couple things that I wanted to see throughout the course of the game that we didn't. Uh, that's a little bit more recursion. Savine's Reclamation would be fantastic with the number of low drops in this deck, and probably also an Ameria Shepherd up at the top. If I'm playing Mono White, I'm playing Ameria Shepherd because if we could have got some of that stuff back from the early game, you know, the game may have gone differently. I don't know. There were a lot of board wipes. It's hard to say, but uh, you can definitely do a lot of things. So those are two things I would definitely add. If you're not a fan of those, you could go for Marshall's Anthem. I like Ameria Shepherd a little bit better, honestly. Uh, the other thing, we got some new cards. This deck was made before Sword of Hearth and Home, so Hearth and Home is going to be the big one. This will just give you more of everything this deck is already doing. 
So that'd be an incredible ad. If you have the budget, Feast and Famine, it's like a, I don't know, 60 or $70 card, so I'm not gonna suggest it here, but it would definitely make it better. As a more budget-friendly option, I think that's where exploring something like Nyx Lotus might make a lot of sense. Not even a Thran Dynamo. I'd, I'd, I'd at least have a Thran Dynamo in the deck, personally. Because even when you're trying to make a bunch of small plays, Thran Dynamo lets you make a bunch of small plays. So there's that. Uh, we got Mindstone in the deck. Like, Mindstone doesn't do that much for me. I get it. It's another value piece. And if you get Sun Titan, obviously it's very good with that. And kind of just feeds into what he's really wanting to do with this deck. I think I want to see a few more land creatures. At least one of them. So you have a couple options. You have Loyal Warhound. Uh, which is a very reasonable option. You have the Fortel one, whose name I forget. And then you also have uh, Cork... Oh, Cork Cartographer's already in the deck, so we're good there. Uh, that was the other one I was thinking of. Okay, yeah, maybe we're fine. So, like, you could add one more of these. Uh, in some ways, based on what this deck is doing, I almost think that might be better than another Mindstone, personally. But you could go either way on that. Uh, Keeper of the Accord is an immensely powerful card. If you're generating all the lands already, you don't necessarily need it, but it's such a good card to have around. It's one of those cards that prevents you from falling too far behind. If all your opponents have way more lands than you, then you can catch back up in a turn cycle, and uh, it's really good for that. So that's definitely one I would look at. Um, the Mono White Finisher is a Chroma's Will. It's such a good card. Uh, I would definitely bring that in. For me, this card is a must. This card just does too much. Uh, to not run this, so I would absolutely get one of those into the deck. It'll speed your clock up a lot, right? We didn't end that game until turn 16. We probably could have ended it a lot sooner with an Akrom as well. Uh, the other thing I was just thinking about, too, is that instead of a Maria Shepherd or Sabine's Reclamation, you could also go for a Light and Shadow, if that's more your speed. Uh, because with Double Strike on God Eternal Oketra, it's a lot of value. It's a lot of value to get, so that is another way you could go about it. I might run all three, personally. Uh, and then there's a couple other things, too. We got those newer creatures whose names I need to remember. Uh, the value creatures from... Oh, oh, can't forget. Guardian of Faith uh, would be incredible for what this deck is doing. Absolutely get yourself a Guardian of Faith. Nadar? Not a terrible idea. Priest of Ancient Lore, that's the one I'm thinking of. Uh, that absolutely needs to go in the deck. More of everything you're doing. Dawnbringer Cleric, another one. And again, a lot of these cards came out after this deck was created. This deck is at least a year old, if not more. So uh, I really like Eye of Vecna as a card draw source in Mono White. So here's 12 new cards that you can think about running in this deck. You don't need to add all of them. You don't need to change all 12 cards. But I would definitely at least consider them and think about them and see if there's uh, and see if there's something you're really feeling. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to be able to cut 12 cards super quickly right here. But here's what I would get rid of. Probably Arcane Encyclopedia. I think it's just a little bit too inefficient, especially now that we have some slightly better options in Eye of Vecna, Priest of Ancient Lore. Um, Pilgrim's Eye is a... Yeah, it's fine, but I think you could get rid of that one very comfortably. Uh, Wayfarer's Bauble, I am not a big fan of. We got it the only time it's ever useful, which is on turn one, which was uh, incredibly lucky in this game, but that's only going to happen about 8% of the time. So, yeah. Not a big fan of Wayfarer's Bauble. I would definitely take any big mana rock over Wayfarer's. That's, just, that's a personal preference. I know that's not Nate's style, but that's what I would do. We didn't get to see the spicy one in this deck, which is Scapegoat. Uh, and I just ordered some of these. They're coming in the mail. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature. Return any number of target creatures you control to their owner's hand. It's What makes it good is that it's only one mana. You just need to leave up one. Leaving up three for a Teferi's Protection or an Eerie Interlude can be very difficult. Uh, Eerie Interlude, I would think, is one that you should also add to this deck. There's a lot of ETBs. So that's one that I would look at as well. Uh, you can go all of them, honestly. Semester's End is the other. Bounty Agent, it's removal, but it's not, like, amazing removal. It's, like, possibly on the chopping block for me. So, those are the easy cuts. Everything else in the deck is pretty good, and you'll have to just sit there and figure out what you really want and don't want. But, you know, here's four easy cuts that uh, are less good than everything else that's going on. A couple land things, too. Talked about it a few times. Uh, Nykthos, something that Mono White almost kind of needs. I don't know that you can live without it. And War Room. Uh, is the other one. And honestly, I, I like Makokoro better than I like Gyre Reach uh, for non-graveyard decks. And I get there's like certain points in the game where you don't want to give your opponents an extra card, but in general, for Mono White, I'm going Makokoro instead, but that's just, that's my own personal thing. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up there. Hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. 
If you want to help support the channel and vote on which decks I play next, feel free to check out my Patreon, link below.